You know, I'm willing to bet that most people had a pretty similar experience playing the new Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach Ruin DLC last week. Oh, Gregory is trapped in the Pizzaplex? Yeah, right. You know what? I bet this is that Mimic character from the books, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. All right, yeah, yeah, I get it. Gregory's been acting super shifty this whole time. He is definitely an AI. I also, I have this mask that lets me phase through solid objects. That's pretty weird, but you know what? I think for the most part, I am finally understanding a FNAF game for once. What the f- Now you all know me, normally I don't like touching FNAF lore with a 29 and a half foot pole. Instead, I usually like to look into the engineering and science behind everything. So, my plan for today's video was to try and explain the Vanny Mask and how it lets you walk through solid walls. But, in the process of researching that, I think I accidentally solved everything. Richard, hit that intro. All right, before we get into this mask, I'm gonna try my best to recap everything that happens in this DLC as quickly as I can. Also, spoilers for literally everything. You play as a girl named Cassie who wanders into the Pizzaplex after getting a distress call from her friend Gregory saying he's trapped and needs her help getting out. After exploring around a bit, you're given a totally not suspicious white rabbit mask called the Virtual Augmented Neural Network Integration Unit, or the Vanny Unit. Do you, do you get it? Do you, get, it's because the, the person, you know, that, that lady from the... For the first time. This mask allows Cassie to walk through certain solid real world objects, which is pretty weird, but we don't have time to dwell on that. The little helper character within the mask named Helpy fits Cassie with occipital transponders that allow him to communicate with her even when she's not wearing the vanity mask. Cassie must use the mask to locate and deactivate a bunch of virtual security nodes throughout the pizza plex in order to access the sinkhole below Roxy Raceway and free Gregory. Along the way, she's attacked by the usual animatronics as well as yet another spooky white rabbit thing referred to as the Anomaly and later dubbed the MXES, which can only be seen while wearing the mask. Cassie eventually reaches the basement to discover that, surprise, surprise, it's not Gregory that's been luring her around in a super shady way, but an AI called the Mimic that was replicating his voice. She's finally able to contact the real Gregory as she escapes, who leads her to the elevator, only to suddenly turn on her and drop the elevator with her in it. Gregory! Only it was probably the mimic cutting in again at the last second because again Gregory is a small child who's currently eating ice cream on a hill not sitting at the top of the elevator shaft with like a, a pair of scissors or something. There are also two other secret endings. If you've discovered all the hidden cameras throughout the game, then you'll be able to take a different path during the escape where you can activate this scooper mechanism that kills the mimic, at which point the game abruptly ends with Cassie's fate left unknown. And lastly, if you don't follow Gregory's directions during the escape, you'll find a cardboard cutout of Freddy. Look at it with the mask and you'll see this weird image, at which point the game just ends. What? All right, so I know you probably have a lot of questions after that, but let's put all those fake Gregories and complete lack of any cathartic ending aside and focus on the Vanny mask. Vanny stands for Virtual Augmented Neural Network Integration. At first, this sounds like just a whole bunch of techno mumbo jumbo that some writer spent like 30 minutes coming up with just to have an acronym that matches the name of the antagonist from the first game. But let's go through those terms one by one to figure out what this actually means. Virtual and augmented are both pretty clear references to virtual reality and augmented reality. Now, technically speaking, VR and AR are not the same thing. Virtual reality is a completely simulated reality where nothing you're seeing is real, like with VR games like Beat Saber, and AR is when something fake is placed in the real world, like that one feature in Pokemon Go that you immediately turned off. Either way though, the gist is that this mask shows you things that aren't real. 
a neural network is a subset of machine learning, or in buzzword terms, AI. So, the Vanny is an AR slash VR headset that integrates you into the neural network of this AI called the Mimic. This is how Helpy was able to replicate Cassie's voice and how Gregory can comment on things that Helpy says throughout the game. It's because they're both part of the Mimic neural network. All right, so the Vanny Mask is a fancy VR headset that allows an AI to copy your voice and make you sing Frank Sinatra with Plankton. Cool. But that still doesn't explain, you know, the whole phasing through solid objects thing. In the games, there are certain points where like a box is blocking your path. But if you put on the mask, you realize that the box isn't real and you can walk right through it. But if it's really a VR headset, then surely it should be the other way around, right? When you're wearing the mask, you see boxes and stuff blocking your path. But when you take it off, you realize that it's all just virtual. None of it is real. I mean, that's how AR works. My first thought was, I don't know, dude, it's a video game magic or something, but but looking a little deeper, I think there is an actual explanation for this. Shortly after putting on the Vanny mask, Helpy implants some occipital transponders into Cassie. More big science words, let's break that one down too. The occipital lobe is the part of the brain that interprets what your eyes see. So your eyes receive light waves and then your occipital lobe converts that information into colors, depths, basically it controls what we see. A transponder is a device that detects radio signals. So if the Vanny mask implants transponders into the occipital lobe, then it could, at least theoretically, use radio waves to alter what you see, even when you're not wearing the mask. That would suggest that the objects that you can phase through in the game don't actually exist at all. When you have the mask off, the occipital transponders make you think that there's a box or whatever in the way, and maybe it's like so realistic that it tricks the rest of your nervous system into thinking that the box is real too, so you can't move through it, I don't know, Matrix style. This is actually very similar to the rightfully despised sound illusion discs from the books, which use sound waves of specific frequencies to make you see things that aren't really there. These occipital transponders are still very dumb, don't get me wrong, but at least they're trying to justify it just, just, a, just a little bit more, just a few more science words in there. So essentially, the Vanny unit does two things. It implants transponders into your brain to affect what you see, and it gathers information from you that it can integrate into the Mimic AI. Great, problem solved, video over. Except there's still one question that I have. Why though? Like, what's the point? If the whole goal of Helpy and the Mask is to trick Cassie into setting the Mimic free, how does making her think there's a box in the way unless she wears the mask help with that? And what's the deal with the anomaly? Is that a, a feature of the mask? Helpy sure doesn't seem to like it, but like, is that just more part of the manipulation? Uh, look, I know the villains in this series aren't known for having super well thought out plans, but like, what was even the goal here? At first, I was just gonna leave that one for the professionals to mull over, but after thinking about it a bit more, I think I might have figured it out. Let's start with the anomaly, or M-X-E-S. How, how do you say it? Mexis? Is that how you say it? Mexis? No, no. Mexis sounds like, sounds like a place you'd be ordering like a burrito or something from. Actually, you know what, Richard? Do you want to order us some Mexis? Our first glance, this thing seems to be the main antagonist for most of the game. Sort of like this game's equivalent to Vanny from the main game. It shows up, the music gets scary, your camera gets fuzzy, and you gotta take off your mask to save yourself, which hinders your mobility. <laughs> Aren't those game designers clever? There are also certain points in the game where this thing will activate jamming beacons, which fully prevent you from using the Vanny unit until you've turned them off. However, if you play the game long enough, you'll realize that this antagonist doesn't actually attack you. In fact, it doesn't really do anything. It just kind of looms over you. So what gives? If you beat the game, you discover that the tex Mexis is basically the security system designed to keep the mimic trapped in the basement. So in a twist, this thing is actually the good guy. Uh, but then why is it always popping out and making me 
spill my uh, my water in my lap. I swear, <laughs> I swear it's just water. Richard, Richard, don't you pan down. Richard, Richard, don't you dare. Well, think about it. The only two things that this guy does in the whole game are chase you down while you're wearing the mask or activate beacons that fully prevent you from wearing the mask. Whether it's scaring you into taking it off or outright stopping you from putting it on in the first place, it's pretty clear. This thing doesn't want you wearing that mask. But why? Well, I think the reason is twofold. First of all, you can only see the security nodes while you're wearing the vanity mask. Now, initially, this made no sense to me. Like, realistically speaking, what are these things? Are the security nodes hidden in, what, the air? I mean, like, it's a video game franchise with ghost robots, so anything is possible, but I think there is a much more grounded explanation. Maybe the real security nodes are actual physical objects built into the architecture of the building, hidden in the floors and walls and stuff. And the big rabbit things that we see are just augmented projections over them to make them easier for Cassie to see. That's the only way that I can make sense of this stuff, unless like the entire FNAF universe also exists in like the Matrix or something, which I mean, at this point honestly seems pretty likely. So Nexus Bell is trying to stop you from putting on the mask, because if you don't wear the mask, then you can't find the nodes. And if you can't find the nodes, then you can't free the mimic. That makes enough sense to me, but I think there's actually one other reason why Del Mexis doesn't want you putting that thing on. Because funny enough, this actually isn't the first time that we've seen a mask like this. In FNAF VR Help Wanted, we learn that a woman named Vanessa was possessed by this computer virus called Glitch Trap after she wore the exact same mask in a VR game, and she would later go on to be Vanny, with a Y, not an I, the sort of primary antagonist in the main game of Security Breach who didn't really end up doing anything. At the time, we assumed that this was some sort of digital consciousness recreation of William Afton, who was trying to return to the real world, because let's be honest, that's probably what it was supposed to be at the time. But it seems like they are retconning that game to imply that Glitch Trap wasn't William Afton, but the Mimic replicating him. So if this white rabbit mask was the thing that allowed the Mimic to infect the mind of Vanessa, then perhaps the same thing could be happening to Cassie. The more you wear the mask, the more the Mimic can integrate you into its neural network until eventually it fully takes over. That might be what's happening in that bizarre secret ending. In a moment of panic and mental weakness, Cassie puts on the Vanny mask one last time, allowing the Mimic to fully take control, fully integrate her into the neural network while showing her a peaceful image of Gregory, who we know the Mimic has been impersonating, Helpy, who's also a construct of the Mimic, and Vanessa, who we know has already been infected. Come on in, join us, they're saying the water's fine. Come on, join us, trust us. You don't have a choice. Join us. That could explain why the occipital transponders make you see all these fake barriers blocking your path. The mimic is forcing you to constantly put the mask back on in order to progress, slowly integrating you more and more into itself. That means that Mexis is not just trying to stop you from finding the nodes, it's trying to save your life. With that revelation, all of the pieces were starting to fall into place for me, but I still had one lingering question. When we find the Mimic, it's behind a wall of concrete. And if the Mexus was designed to keep the Mimic locked away, well then someone must have first locked it away. But who? Well, towards the end of the game, you can find a little robot named Candy Cadet who will tell you a story of a mother and a child who lived in the woods with a dangerous monster. The mother managed to lock the monster in their basement to keep her family safe. However, in time, the monster learned to mimic the sound of the mother's voice, and one day, while the mother was out, the monster sang the child a lullaby in the voice of their mother, tricking the child into opening the door to the basement and letting the monster out. This is surprisingly direct for a FNAF game. I mean, 
I mean, this is barely a metaphor at this point. It's pretty much exactly what happens in the game. Cassie is the child, the mimic is the monster in the basement that tricks Cassie into letting it out, and the mother is... well, we don't know. The most obvious answer might be Gregory if we take the story literally. The monster in the story mimicked the mother, and it was the mother who initially trapped it. Here, the mimic is copying Gregory, so that would mean that Gregory was the one who initially trapped it. Uh, however, the real Gregory also mentions the end that the mimic has been down there for a long time, and he genuinely sounds like he doesn't really know how it got there. And also, I mean, he's a small child. I don't think he's down there pouring concrete over a door. My other idea was Cassie's dad. Not only does it parallel the familial connection from the story, but Cassie also briefly mentions that her dad owns a Faz wrench. A weird detail to include considering her dad is never mentioned again. This could just be the game's way of explaining how Cassie knows what a Faz wrench is, but it does mean that her dad at least worked at the Pizzaplex at some point, meaning he could have known about the mimic. Or who knows, maybe it was Zombie Mike or the puppet or one of the dozen other characters that this series keeps bringing back again and again. I don't really know. And to be honest, when it comes to understanding the story of this game specifically, it doesn't really matter who trapped the mimic because it doesn't even work. The mimic still gets out. All right, I know this might've been a lot to take in. FNAF is literally incapable of having a straightforward plot. So allow me to recap what the actual story of this game seems to be. A long time ago, someone managed to trap a dangerous AI called the Mimic in the basement of the Pizzaplex. They created a security system called Nexus, consisting of a bunch of security nodes hidden within the very architecture of the Pizzaplex that would keep the Mimic trapped. The Vanny Mask is something built either by the Mimic itself or someone working for it, maybe Vanessa while she was under its control, maybe someone else. This mask allows the wearer to see virtual, augmented representations of the hidden nodes to help them locate and remotely deactivate them. It can also integrate the wearer's consciousness into the Mimic AI itself. Wear the mask long enough and it will eventually fully take over. Lastly, it implants occipital transponders into their brain, which can allow the Mimic to alter what they see via radio waves, even when they aren't wearing the mask. The Mimic is able to use the voice of Gregory, Helpy, and the Vanny mask to lure Cassie through the Pizzaplex. It places fake barriers in her path that she needs to use the Vanny mask to get past, but the more she wears the mask, the more she loses herself to the neural network. The Mexus tries its best to stop Cassie, scaring her into removing the mask without actually hurting her and activating jamming beacons to stop her from wearing it to begin with, but it's not enough. The Mimic tricks Cassie into deactivating all the security nodes and the Mexus, at which point it can finally break free. What happens next? Well, I suppose that's up to you.